been called the Second War of American Independence. Once again, the United States and Great Britain were in conflict. There were trade disagreements, the impressment of American sailors, the perceived annexation of Canada by the United States, and the harassment of frontiersmen as they pushed the American border westward. The British, in the War of 1812, had the upper hand. And who would have thought that two young ladies, thinking quickly on their feet, in some small harbor town in eastern Massachusetts, could turn the tide on the British? In a fishing village on the south shore of Massachusetts called Situate, was in desperate need of a lighthouse. In 1811, construction of this lighthouse was complete. And by April 1812, the lighthouse was operational and had its first lightkeeper. His name was Simeon Bates, and he moved into the cottage adjacent to the lighthouse with his nine children. In June and July of 1814, Situate was raided by the British. As they rode closer to the shore, women and children gathered up their belongings from their houses and the British landing demanding fruit, vegetables, and any perishables. The British commander looked at the women and children and said, don't worry, we won't hurt you. In July, the British tried one more landing attempt and it was decided that a militia had to be posted at Situate Lighthouse. All of this British hostility is witnessed by Lightkeeper Bates and his family. But as summer wore on, it looked as though the threat of another British invasion was not possible. The militia retreated back into the village of Situate, and the Bates were back to their life as Lightkeeper and family. It's now the first week of September, and Simeon Bates has gone into town with some of his children leaving his two daughters, Rebecca, age 20, Abigail, age 16, behind at the lighthouse. Rebecca is in the kitchen, boiling water, preparing the evening's dinner, when she looks out and sees a 74-gun frigate called the Bulwark, anchored in Situate Harbor. The British were back. She ran out of the cottage and yelled for her sister, Abigail, Abigail! Abigail, come quickly. They run up to the top of the lighthouse, and there she confirms it is the bulwark, and they're offloading two longboats full of Marines. Moreover, they're rowing towards the shore. Well, the girls quickly descend the staircase of the lighthouse, and they go into the basement. There, the local militia had stored some muskets. Rebecca grabs one, and then she hesitates. She thinks, if I fire this musket, that British ship with its powerful cannon will lob shells and burn our cottage and the lighthouse to the ground. She looks around and sees something. She has another idea. There, in the corner of the cellar, was a drum and a fife. Sister, I have an idea. You take the drum and you shall play roll call. I will play Yankee Doodle Dandy and we will sound as if we were an entire town militia waiting for the British to land. The Bates girls take their drum and their fife just behind a sand dune and begin to play. The wind is blowing offshore. The British hear something. They stop rowing. Who is this militia? Rebecca and Abigail expect the British to be upon them at any moment, but they're not. They halt their playing, and they sneak up to the sand dunes. And to their astonishment, they see the British have retreated back to their ship. The deception worked. Well, the townspeople hear the playing of fife and drum. The British have retreated. There must be a militia up at the lighthouse. They all flock down the road. And to their astonishment, they come upon some brave young ladies, an American army of two. Legend has it that the ghosts of Rebecca and Abigail Bates still haunt Situate Lighthouse today. Fife and drum music, they say, 
can sometimes be heard wafting on a warm late summer breeze.